the world of interface opens at the beginning of time itself, all centered around this simple question, why does life exist? And why does life continue to grow and advance? This ideology will become important later in the timeline. The Sunflower, a symbol of loyalty and admiration. On May 15th, 1904, Dreamland opened to the public in Coney Island, Brooklyn. Dreamland was an amusement park that also featured circus elements. One of the acts featured in the circus was a clown named Percy. Percy Huckster is one of the most iconic and recognizable British circus clowns of all time. The name chosen by the ringmaster was likely derived from the iconic clown of the time. The ringmaster had also come up with a spectacular story to go along with the Percy act. According to the tale, the ringmaster had tamed a great dragon with only his voice, and said dragon had transformed into this incorporeal clown. Now the clown had fallen in love with a fellow clown, but he was denied his love by the jealous ringmaster. She was his sunflower, and the reason he accepted his cruel fate. But with his love ripped away from him, there was nothing holding him back anymore. Heartbroken, enraged, and having realized that he had no control over his own life, Percy burned Dreamland to the ground and ended what he felt was his enslavement in 1911. The clown that Percy had fallen in love with had bore a child to the ringmaster prior to the end of Dreamland, and both her and her child had been relocated. They lived near the sea, the splendor of the lighthouse sparkling in the eyes of her child. Enter Henrik Nabisky, born in the year 1910, a photographer for the military who mysteriously arrived by parachute near a hospital without a nearby plane in sight in the days when the skies were still blue and the unseen was still hidden from mortal eyes. Henrik married the nurse who had found and saved him and soon they brought forth a daughter. Henrik had a family. His life was happy and complete. Then came the event that changed the world. War times had returned and Henrik once again took up the mantle of wartime photographer. During this war, a cloaking experiment was performed, but the technology malfunctioned and the ship and crew were teleported. Upon arriving on the other side, the crew began to break down into energy and fuse to the hull of the ship. Percy, his life after Dreamland remaining a mystery, was close enough to be impacted by this phenomenon. His body completely destabilized into energy and began to rise from the chaos of the destabilized matter below. Upon witnessing this, the military began firing at the unidentified object, triggering a discharge of the unstable energy that the being had absorbed from the ship's cloaking device. The result was the reveal of the world unseen. Creatures and spirits, which had once been invisible, were now uncloaked, visible to all. A young Mr. Greetings watches mischief, the clown that had previously been known as Percy, fall into the sea and rise as the great dragon from his very own story, whom the ringmaster had claimed to have tamed. And thus, we are introduced to our three main characters. Hendrik was photographing a nearby nuclear power plant around this time, and the blast, whether it was caused by the shockwave of the reveal, or was supercharged by it, killed Hendrik instantly. The energy combined with his will to survive, allowing him to reform, but locking him into an infinite time loop. Hendrik was now essentially immortal. Mischief, realizing that he now truly did not belong among the world of man, flees to live among the spirits, but he visits on occasion to cause a bit of mischief. Mr. Greetings, the lone survivor of the incident, vowed to return the world to the way it was, even if that meant hunting down his changed crewmates. He was tasked with this mission and given full support by the U.S. government and others. As the years passed, Henrik's wife grew old and eventually passed on, but Henrik, trapped in the time loop, did not age. Mr. Greetings used his power, achieved by his government trust and backing, to start a company referred to as Greetings Robotics. At Henrik's wife's funeral, many did not understand why Henrik had not aged alongside her. His place within the world of man was too becoming obscured. He pondered if he belonged anywhere at all. Henrik and his daughter returned home, and in their mourning, 
they ponder the mysteries surrounding their current situation. Time passed, and Henrik and his now adult daughter look back on the fond memories of the time spent with his late wife. She assures Henrik that he still has family, and he is not alone. Though he is still burdened by his loss, he is slowly recovering. Greetings Robotics revolutionizes the world with the discovery of a limitless, clean energy source in the form of spiritual essence, also referred to as cerebral energy. Henrik's daughter gets married and soon has a daughter of her own. Henrik's granddaughter grows up and she herself marries, having a daughter of her own, making Henrik a great grandfather. Now, having been living alone for some time, Depression from isolation and his parting from his wife sets in. Henrik's daughter decides to confront her ageless father to try to understand his unwillingness to move on, his immortality enraging her as she feels her own life drawing to a close, but even he doesn't fully understand it. Death came to claim Henrik's daughter. Henrik, once again, was left behind, unable to join his loved ones in the afterlife. He grew quieter and more distant. As Henrik's daughter's soul left her body, it formed into a spiritual being in the shape of a hand, a being we now refer to as the Ghost. The Ghost approached her daughter and explained to her that her time to pass was quickly approaching as well. Her daughter then made a deal with the Ghost. She would join her mother in death, but before the Ghost would cross over to the afterlife with her, she must promise to find her granddaughter a safe place to grow up, so she could live on in their stead. The day of reckoning soon approached, and we see the spirits gather to witness the event, mischief included. Henrik, at the depths of his depression, has decided to end his own life. The spirits watch in waiting. The ghost posed to save her granddaughter, and mischief posed to feed on the spiritual essence of those who are soon to perish. The moment arrives, Henrik walking in front of an oncoming vehicle. He embraces death with open arms, but death does not find him and instead claims the lives of the passenger and driver who just so happened to be Henrik's granddaughter and her husband. The spirits quickly act, the ghost saving her granddaughter and mischief feeding on the spirits of the fallen parents. Henrik peers over the side of the bridge in horror, having recognized what he had just done. He dives in, hoping to save them, but only finds the lifeless bodies of his granddaughter and her husband in the sunken vehicle. He is now more alone than ever. The ghost takes care of her granddaughter as she seeks a new home for her. Greetings Robotics reveals its newest creation, the missing piece in the quest to restore the world and re-separate the world of the unseen from the seen. As CEO of Greetings Robotics Corporation, it is my pleasure, my honor, to present to you Cammy, Generation 1. Cammy, a robotic interface capable of using cerebral energy to think, fly, teleport, and much more to capture and store spiritual beings. The consensus was, if they could not recloak the world, they would simply remove the spirits in a humane way. The interface included an artificial world for the spirits, in which they could live, separated from us, in peace, unseen once again by human eyes. And so, the hunt began, starting with the ghost. Cammy uses its powers to deconstruct the wall of an apartment building in which the ghost and her granddaughter had been lodging. It ripped the spirit away from the child, leaving the poor orphan abandoned again. We now return to Henrik as he stares into the cerebral energy-filled eyes of a storefront mannequin. He is desperate to know the secrets of this energy and why his own spiritual energy cannot pass from this world. Mischief, having picked up on the ghost's spiritual essence vanishing, is frightened and begins to run from the place where the ghost was devoured. While doing so, he spots a familiar face. He pokes Henrik and quickly explains how he came to be. Henrik is stunned, but intrigued by this undead being who has experienced a rebirth similar to his own. Mischief requests that Henrik join him on his run and becomes a bus, so the two could travel together more quickly. Mischief feels as if Henrik's will is compelling them toward an art gallery. Mischief disguises himself as clothing, unexpectedly fusing with Hendrik's spiritual energy, and the two enter the gallery as one. Inside, they find a painting that resembles Hendrik, the Son of Man, by René Magritte. 
Mischief separates from Henrik to discuss this painting with him. Suddenly, another guest of the gallery approaches. Mischief disguises himself as a sunflower, proving that his love and dedication still propels him, though now that dedication is to Henrik, who Mischief realized was the son of the clown he had loved. Mischief then stumbles upon a painting that reminds him of his own birth in this form, along with the birth of this new world. The painting, Geopolitical Child by Salvador Dal. He explains the significance to Henrik. Henrik is reminded of the day that the world changed and his time lock curse began. This sends him spiraling into mental anguish. Henrik falls to the floor, unconscious, unable to withstand the pain. Meanwhile, Cami is assimilating the ghost into the core interface brain, in a blimp high above the world below. Mr. Greetings is within this blimp, witnessing the assimilation. He is obviously mentally distressed. His objective from long ago is being completed at long last, but he wonders if this is truly for the best. If the cerebral energy had actually revealed itself to humanity on purpose, then perhaps undoing it would cause the natural balance to be disrupted. What he did notice is that the primary beings that had once been his crewmates seemed to represent body parts of something bigger. He pondered the meaning and came to the conclusion that this was an evolutionary event. Perhaps the spirit of life itself was trying to form some sort of incarnation and he needed only assemble the pieces. This could still be accomplished through his current mission by assembling the parts within the interface. And so he continued to carry out the plan with this new hidden agenda in mind. Henrik wakes up in a hospital bed to a commercial for Greetings Robotics. Mischief flies in and informs him that he is healthy, but that the staff is concerned about his age, along with his impossible youthful appearance. To keep him from becoming a lab rat, Mischief flies Henrik out of the window by becoming his parachute. Mischief meets up with an old friend at his restaurant, suspecting that Henrik would be hungry by now and could use a good meal. Mischief becomes one with Henrik again, but the spirit recognizes Mischief almost immediately, stating that Mischief's pink camouflage is useless. Mischief retorts that it depends on what the camouflage is obscuring you from. They have a brief discussion about the strong eating the weak, but the lowly parasite eating the strong. The octopus claims that Mischief is doing this now, and he admits to it, separating from Henrik. The octopus then proceeds to tell Mischief about his prophetic dreams concerning Cami and the interface. As a strange man enters the currently closed restaurant, Mischief becomes a fly and tells the man to come back later. Mischief treats Henrik to dinner, but Henrik won't touch a thing. Henrik does, however, begin to open up about his lost family. Mischief informs him that they are not all gone and that his great-granddaughter lives. Feeling guilty, Mischief then opens up about his need to consume souls and hints at having absorbed Henrik's granddaughter and her husband. Henrik agrees to go seek out his great-granddaughter we then see Mischief become a car, and the two drive off, as we see the mysterious guy from earlier reporting the spirits to Greetings Robotics. Inside the Greetings Robotics blimp, we see Mr. Greetings in conflict with himself over completing the mission as requested, and completing this unknown being within the interface. He is beginning to wonder if his choices are even his own, or if something greater is working through him. Cami, being a machine powered by spirits, begins to long for identity, an identity that a collective can simply not possess, individuality. We then witness Cami attempting to assimilate the octopus spirit, having identified it as a spiritual heart of sorts. The two are locked in combat. Cami eventually overpowers the octopus spirit by utilizing the powers it had gained from the ghost. Henrik's will begins to guide them toward his long abandoned home. While the two are traveling there, Mischief notices that Henrik's cigarette keeps reappearing after each use. It is now that Mischief realizes the depth of the time lock that Henrik has found himself trapped in. And, due to his lack of having devoured any souls recently, Mischief is incapable of holding together his vehicle form and morphs into something more sustainable. Along the path, Mischief spots a frog that is about to be killed and stops the snack on the energy that is about to be released. A surprise encounter ensues when the spirit of the stream awakens and tells Henrik that death is not something to anguish over, but a natural part of life. As everything rots and dies, so that life may go on in a new form. Henrik ponders this, and Mischief snags a quick photo of the spirit and absorbs the frog's cerebral energy. The two finally arrive at Henrik's abandoned home, and he notices that the tree that had been in his family for generations has too been uprooted and is passing on without him. 
back in the blimp, Cammy is processing the newly acquired octopus spirit and is setting its sights on the recently reported spirits of Mischief and Henrik. It's at this point that we observe the handiwork of Greetings Robotics. The apartment building deconstructed by Cammy is being rebuilt by the spiritual hands now under the control of Cammy, using cerebral energy conversion to restore the walls to their prior state. We also catch a glimpse of Henrik's great-granddaughter wandering the streets alone. One of the hands unexpectedly shifts back into the ghost before her eyes. Henrik mourns his losses once again over the melancholy tunes of his harmonica, before exhaustion pulls him into a deep sleep. In the morning, Henrik stares at the lighthouse. As Henrik reflects on the past, concerning the first time he had witnessed this lighthouse with his mother, near the very house that he and his family had too lived in, the two decide to pay it a visit. And upon arriving, mischief begins to feel uneasy and questions what has drawn Henrik near. Henrik's great-granddaughter had spotted the wanted posters that displayed her great-grandfather and instructed the ghost to take her to his old house by the lighthouse just in case he was still living there. Unfortunately, in doing this, she led Mr. Greetings and Cammy directly to where Henrik had been hiding, as the ghost disguise had been a trick played by Cammy. Back in the city, we hear a recording of Mr. Greetings, discussing whether the world was meant to become one with this world of the unseen or not, and if it were right to try to reverse this new world that the children of this generation had grown up with. They knew not of the old world. Was it truly fair to them? Henrik and Mistress prepared to enter the lighthouse, and as they draw near the building, they both notice a strange energy coming from within. Against their better judgment, they enter the lighthouse and ascend to the top. Once at the top, Henrik believes that he sees his wife's face in the pulsating tube of cerebral energy. He isn't allowed to focus on this curiosity for long, however, for in the distance, a noise reverberates across the skies. The Greetings Robotics blimp has located them. And Mr. Greetings, having recognized the being responsible for the world changing, activates the artificial intelligence brain of the interface and orders it to use the sea life spirits to quickly empower itself and then capture mischief. The eyes open and the interface begins absorbing. The shift in energy causes the tube of souls to destabilize and the spirits connected to the interface attempt to take Henrik. The rudimentary link to the interface was able to access his mind, but not fully absorb his spirit, pulling his soul temporarily into the interface. While this is happening, we see that Mr. Greetings has directly linked his mind to the interface so that he can confront and convince Henrik to join with them. Having nearly completed his task, Mr. Greetings has decided that he has outlived his usefulness in his physical form and ends his own life to become fully one with the interface. We are then given a look within the artificial world where Mr. Greetings and Henrik meet at last. Greetings shows Henrik what he believes to be the truth of the world and requests that Henrik fully join with the interface by pressing the red button in the lighthouse. In doing this, the deity he believes should rightfully exist can be born. He informs him that he can live happily within the interface and that his daughter's soul is in there, having been absorbed as the ghost. She can be with him once again. Greetings then reveals this to be true and the two have a long-awaited reunion. Henrik is left with a choice between reuniting with his family here or returning to his quest of finding his great-granddaughter in the world of the living. Back in the lighthouse, Henrik awakens, having lost his temporary connection to the interface. Mischief reveals that he knows what Henrik is trying to decide, being still connected to him. Mischief asks Henrik if building this god is truly what nature intended, or if it was Mr. Greeting's misunderstanding, having been sent into overwhelmed hysteria upon seeing what was never meant to be seen by human eyes. Mischief sums up the question with, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Henrik lets Mischief's words sink in as the awakened interface senses the spiritual energy within the lighthouse. Henrik chooses to exist in the real world and finish what he started before allowing himself to move on. With the decision made, Mischief quickly fuses to Henrik and flees the building before they can be absorbed by the living interface. A hand of Cammy tries to stop them, but Mischief dodges it. The interface guzzles from the lighthouse like a baby with its bottle, but it is not satisfied with the minuscule amount of energy within it. The hand forms again, forcing Henrik and Mischief to descend the rock formation for cover. Mischief tells Henrik that he made the right decision in choosing what is real over what is an illusion, for an illusion isn't a choice at all. As if on cue, a visage of Henrik's daughter 
and his great-granddaughter appear before him. But something is not right. Henrik then notices that his daughter is holding a knife to his great-granddaughter's neck. Mischief expels himself from Henrik's body and becomes an apple. The illusion of his daughter coaxes Henrik to join the interface, along with his great-granddaughter, now that they have reunited so they can all finally live together within the interface. Henrik holds up mischief in the form of the apple, symbolizing his choice of real life over the illusion of life within the interface. In a swift pitch, Henrik launches mischief at the illusion. Mischief morphs into a hand and grabs the thing's face, pulling off the mask to reveal that the being was indeed Cammy. Mischief takes a long look through Cammy's eyes and sees nothing differently from the way he did before. Cammy attacks Mischief and uses this moment to comedically explain the difference between them. The difference is that Mischief remained an individual. Cammy never was an individual to begin with, though the two are technically the same on the inside. They are two very different beings. Mischief then reaches for Cammy's exposed energy and begins to absorb it. Cammy panics, unleashing multiple attacks, including self-destructing, in an attempt to destroy Mischief once and for all. Mischief is damaged, but is able to absorb enough energy from Henrik's paradoxical hat to reform. He then takes the form of an apple again, though this time much larger, in an attempt to lure the interface monster to him. It almost immediately notices, and charges at the spiritual fruit. Mischief delivers his last legendary line as he reminds Henrik that the strong eat the weak, and the strong do eat, even parasites. He is then scooped up and devoured by the interface. Filled with mischief's cerebral energy, the interface is at last satisfied. But it is devoured in return by mischief. In our final glimpse into this world, we open on a snowy afternoon, where life has returned to some semblance of normalcy. We see a diner in the city, two of the patrons seated there being Henrik and his great-granddaughter. The scene is inspired by the painting Nighthawks by Edward Hopper. After the credits, we get one final mysterious scene. We see the lifeless body of the interface, but within its nostrils, lies cerebral energy. Could Mischief have survived the ordeal? Are the two locked in an endless power struggle? Perhaps the world within the interface persists in some sort of safe mode, though the two beings themselves have passed away. Only time will tell, I suppose. But that is a story for another day. Hey everybody, thank you all so much for watching my corrected Umami interface timeline. With interface being such an awesome series, I really feel it deserved a proper timeline. And the one I had before was good, but I did make some mistakes. And there were some things that I found out later that I really wanted to change, especially after talking to Justin and things. So I really just felt it deserved a second attempt. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Got all kinds of live dies, all kinds of new videos, and so many things on the way. And if you're holding out for gorillas, I've got three new videos on the way, so hold on for that as well. And just thank you all again for everything you do. I was looking back at the last timeline, it was a year ago, and I just... I can't believe how far we've come since then, and it's all thanks to you all, so just thank you for having my back. I really appreciate it, guys. Alright, and until then, as always, keep your eyes wide open, and never stop reading. I'll see you all. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons and channel members. Thanks to you, I'm able to do what I love. CNK114, Investigator Zeus, Dobby's Music, Jebra Mullins, Free Spirit Katie. MC Darfur, Vexus, Agniska, Granny Monster, Nightmare Luna, Practical Necromancy, and Archer. Really, thank you so much for everything you do. It means the world to me.